Hello treasures, welcome back to the channel. This is Dr. Bisa's Corner where we care about your spirit, soul and body. And if this is your first time of seeing this face, do well to subscribe and turn on your notification bell. I want to welcome all our new treasures in the house. Thanks for joining this family. So today is Ask Dr. Bisa. segment I usually share with you the questions that came to my inbox and today I'll be reading our first question here which says good morning ma my baby is 28 days old and is having colic what could be the cause someone recommended a medication which I have tried but he still cries both night and day is there something I am not doing right he is my third child I didn't have this experience with the first two so the first question, the first thing I answered was that no child is the same. Every condition in a particular child usually differs from one child to another. So colic is not an exception. And if you have a male child, if you have a child who is on infant formula, their own experience will actually be different from a female child or an exclusively breastfed child. So colic is a prolonged and or an intense cry in a healthy child. Prolonged intense cry and fuziness in a healthy child. It usually has its own peaks. It usually was at night or in the evening. And remember this child that is fusy or crying is not wet and is healthy and is not hungry. So these are the three things you need to rule out to be sure that it's colic. The time it occurs usually occurs in the evening or at a particular time of the day. Secondly, this child is not hungry. Thirdly, this child is not wet. Fourth, this child is healthy. So when you have checked all this, there is no fever, there is no cough, there is no catar, and this child is crying with intense pain and fuziness, then it is colic. Now, let me define colic medically for us. Colic is an intense cry or fuziness in a healthy baby that lasts for three or more hours a day for three or more days a week and for three or more weeks. So this is the definition. And remember, the child has to be held. So what are the features of colic? There is intense crying like that of someone in pain. Usually the child gets rigid. You see the hands stiffen, the legs stiffen, the child aching the back then these are the things you see and say it could be colic also remember the timing it occurs at a particular time of the day usually it is relieved by bowel movement it is relieved by bowel movement that means the child could pass feces or pass gas and you see that the child begins to calm down. the cause is usually unknown it starts at about the second week of life and would stop around the, three, the third to fourth month of life. The cause is usually unknown, but there are several contributing factors. So the first contributing factor could be the developing digestive system. You know, when I had this experience with my first child, it can be stressful, and that is why parents worry a lot. They give so much concussion. By the end, they'll be telling us things we shouldn't give our child. In fact, if the colic, if your baby is experiencing colic and you are worried, please take the child to the hospital and see a pediatrician. It is very important. So now, the first contributing factor could be the developing digestive system. Another one could be excessive gas while eating, while swallowing. That's why we feel it is worse or more painful or more chronic in butterfed children because they tend to swallow a lot more of air. Also, it could be due to lactose intolerance and that is also why butterfed or children who are not breastfed exclusively are also, they have the worst form of colic. 
I'm not saying that those that are exclusively breastfed don't have colic, but usually the worst form is found in those that are bottle-fed or given infant formulas. Also, another contributing factor could be the developing nervous system. It can also be a sign of a child's Who? migraine. That's migraine that is... Um, starting in childhood this can also be another contributing so it could be due to food allergy maybe your child is being exclusively breastfed there could be something you are eating a drug you are taking that your baby is reacting to also if the child is not adequately bopped you know when we talk about bopping how i wish i could see my children's teddy but let me use this book after you've breastfed your child should lay on your shoulder or on your laps while you rub the back and when the child belges that shows that the child was well bought so that's something that way so when a child is not well bought it could also cause colic because bopping help them to remove excessive now the risk factors are not yet clear but remember i mentioned that it's more is more aggressive in the male gender it's more aggressive in children who are who are not exclusively breastfed who are a formula fed and also if your if the woman smoked during pregnancy colic can also be intense in the child also they're trying to weigh whether it's more in the preterm babies that's premature babies or more in the term babies so these are all risk factors that are being weighed but remember we said the cause of colic is still not well understood complications is majorly on the caregiver it could increase postpartum depression in a mother who is already stressed out with having a child and having a lot of changes in her body also bring about the feeling of of guilt anger stress and just general overwhelm. How do we prevent or at least make the child comfortable? One, make sure the child is not hungry. Two, make sure you bop the child after each meal very well. Three, try white noise like the sound of washing machine, the sound, the sound of vacuum cleaner, dishwasher. All this can help distract the baby and make the baby to come. Some babies also prefer outdoors being swaddled, being you could undress the baby and just place him or her on your skin naked. Just that soothing effect. Remember this is a pain so usually when you feel pain you want to be suited. So most times when they are being they're, they're suited it solves their problem them massage put them on a swing take them on car rides but it's very important that we avoid shaking them vigorously as that could cause a damage to their brain also you to take time out when the baby has cried remember this cry can last up to three hours so you can imagine a child crying for three hours for no just cause i can remember my first she cried and cried and cried i joined her and stay crying so most times you give yourself break can give the baby to someone another person and you go have your rest knowing that colic will always go away colic does not really have does not have any lasting complications for the baby just that it stresses both of you out so finally please avoid giving medications that was not recommended by a doctor you know we have a lot of yard people compound people trying to tell you to give that and that please do not give any medication if it was not recommended by your doctor. Also, avoid, like I've seen someone say, I'll talk about gripe water. I actually heard it for the first time and it's actually sold over the counter. Please do not give. Some girl are here to give grape water because they feel grape and gripe, gripe, gripe are the same thing. Please do not give any sort of concussion some give oils and so many things rub rub on the baby your baby just needs to be suited needs to be talked to and needs to be distracted from whatever pain that he or she is passing to so i hope you enjoyed this video please if you have any question for me come inbox check my instagram handle at ada emea or you check our facebook Bisa's corner. Once you go there, drop your question and it will be answered right on this channel. God bless you till I see you next time. Remember, I treasure you. Bye.